Hi, welcome to Breastfeeding with Sarah. This is a special video I wanna share with you where I will be welcoming you into our postpartum blessing way ceremony. This is a ceremony I do to acknowledge that being pregnant, giving birth, learning to breastfeed, and becoming a mother are all profound rites of passage that call upon us to have great courage to be vulnerable. And being vulnerable is the gateway to which we can live and love fully. Now, one of the oldest stories ever told is of the mythical heroic journey of Anana. She is the archetype of the woman warrior who was transformed on her journey of becoming a mother. And I will be reading an abridged version of Anana's Descent from Pam England's book, Ancient Map for Modern Birth. Come join us. Anana was a woman of power a warrior, a queen, a poet, and the priestess of seven temples. Inanna heard her call from the great below. She knew that answering it would disrupt her life's rhythms and relationships and bring uncertainty. Like hearing a drum beating in the distance, it's possible to ignore such a call for a while, but they persist until answered. When Inanna's heart was ready, she accepted her call. From that moment on, there was no turning back. With her whole body and mind, she began preparing for her inner journey. Inanna was the priestess of seven temples, a time-consuming vocation as Sumerian temples were bustling community centers with markets, gardens, social gatherings, and ceremonies. To free up time to retreat from her ordinary life, Inanna's first task was to abandon her seven temples. Her next task was gathering seven royal articles imbued with power that would offer her protection as she journeyed through the unknown. Anana dressed for her rite of passage in her finest warrior clothes, arranged her hair, and donned her crown. Around her neck, she tied a lapis necklace and blessing beads. To protect her heart, she tied on her warrior breastplate. Over her hand, she slipped a gold bracelet. Around her shoulders, she wrapped a royal robe. Lastly, she took up her lapis measuring rod and ring. Having completed her tasks of preparation, Inanna walked away from the comforts of her ordinary life. In due time, she arrived at the first gate of the underworld. Bidu, the gatekeeper, whose name meant to open, demanded, who are you? I am Inanna. She answered, queen of heaven and earth. I am a poet, warrior, priestess, and wife. Bidu asked, why has your heart led you here to a place from which no one returns unchanged or unscathed? Anana gave her reasons and demanded to be let in. Come, he said, you may enter. As Anana crossed the first threshold, Bidu took her crown. Anana protested, to which Bidu explained, the ways of the underworld are ancient and proven. Its ways may not be bargained away or questioned. Inanna continued her descent through a labyrinth passage. Gate after gate, Inanna encountered Bidu, the gatekeeper. Each time, Bidu asked Inanna, Who are you? Why has your heart led you to this place, a place from which you will not return unchanged? Each time Inanna passed through a gate, Bidu took something of value something she had brought or worn for protection, comfort, or as a sign to let others know she was special. At the second gate, Bidu took her lapis necklace and blessing beads. At the third gate, he took her breastplate. At the fourth gate, he took her royal robe, leaving her cold and exposed. At the fifth gate, he removed her gold bracelet. At the sixth gate, he took her shoes. At the seventh gate, he took from her hands the lapis, measuring rod, and ring. With each small loss, the queen protested, It isn't fair. Give it back. I didn't agree to this. <clears throat> Bidu reminded Inanna, The ways of the underworld are ancient and may not be questioned. Keep going, Inanna. Find out who you really are. Gate by gate, Inanna descended deeper and deeper into the underworld. The underworld was an unfamiliar place. She did not know her way. Only her resolve lit the path through the dark and twisting labyrinth across thresholds of mercy, 
terror, and doubt. Naked, humble, sweaty, and exhausted, Inanna crawled on her hands and knees toward the last threshold. She had given her all. Finally, she arrived at the seventh gate. By now, the gatekeeper had seized everything except the one thing he could not take, Inanna's determination to do what needed to be done next. Reaching deep inside herself, she mustered up a great push, then another and another until the gatekeeper opened the last gate. And there, in the deepest, most sacred place of all, she saw the one who had been calling, who had been calling her and was who was still calling to her, her newborn baby. In this transformative moment, the person Anana had died. In the next breath, she was reborn as a mother. Once she had gathered her strength, Anana began to hear another call, this time from the great above. To return to her life, she began her slow ascent. At each gate on her return, Bidu asked, Who are you? What do you know now that you did not know before you made this descent? At each gate, the gatekeeper took from Anana something that belonged to the underworld. At the first gate, he took self-absorption from her and gave her gratitude. At the second gate, he took worry from her and gave her relief. At the third gate, he took sleep from her and gave her stamina. At the fourth gate, he took old relationship dynamics and gave her renewal. At the fifth gate, he took the weight of blame of self and others and gave her understanding. At the sixth gate, he stopped her mind from spinning. At the seventh gate, he took pride and gave her humility. At the eighth gate, Bidu took her gathering basket and turned her attention inward. At the ninth gate, he lifted the weight of the whole story and gave her wisdom. The warrior priestess who had left on this journey was surely not the one who had returned. For the descent and return had transformed Anana's mind, body, and heart. So this spiral represents the universal experience of this inner descent and return through this phase of our life. This opens a new path into our hearts for us to feel and experience so deeply. And it allows our wisdom and light to shine back out into the world. The stones at the very center of the spiral represent the weight of our story. And the origin of rebirth and transformation from the descent. The insight and growth that become our gifts are represented today by the roses at the center of the spiral. That we bring out with us as we emerge from our journey and that we spread throughout life forevermore. Let us one by one enter the spiral with our baby and from the center take a stone that represents the weight of your story and also take a rose that represents the wisdom that you gained that you'll share with the world and we'll put a rose in any vase of your choosing along the spiral as you emerge.
This yarn is a symbol of the connection we all share with each other and with the lineage of all those in time before us and all those yet to come who make the journey. I joined us all in this circle and make an ankle or wrist bracelet to remember this connection by. We are connected to all women throughout time who've traveled this passage. We are forever a part of the long human story of motherhood. May we live and love with our whole hearts. I will send you a piece of our red yarn to make a bracelet to connect you with our circle and all women throughout time who've traveled this journey. Just mail a self-addressed stamped envelope to Breastfeeding with Sarah, P.O. Box 2787, Sebastopol, California, 95473, USA.